Instagram. A well paced post. Pin, pin, pin. Okay, there we go. All right. So you've got Instagram is live, Facebook is live. I see people coming. Yay. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Cutie Maya. Hi, Corey. <laughs> I also oh, simple nails. Pink chica. Cute. Um, Lisa. Lisa nail. What up, Liz? <laughs> what up? Yeah, sorry. I said I'd post this. I'd to go live around four ish. Well, it's still four o'clock something. <laughs> four forty seven. <laughs> anyway, hello, Natalie. All right, you're doing your nails again. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> Nail Silla, thanks, Anna, for asking my numerous questions. Hey, Roaring Tiger. Um, so, hi, beautiful all. Thanks. All right. Okay, it's been kind of a crazy day today. Andrew went in for hand surgery. He um, was helping Corey. So, quick recap he was helping Corey. Um, Nothing was moving, but remove an auger from the tractor, trying to separate it. And the auger, something slipped and pinched Andrew's finger and kind of went, like, went sideways this way, just nicked the bone, but crushed it. And so that was a week ago. And um, he ended up going in for the doc decided uh, yes, we need to do a little bit better re reconstructive type of surgery. And I was really, really glad. This guy is a hand specialist. That's all he does. He does probably like 70 or 80 surgeries a week. And that's all he does is hands. Doesn't go any farther than the elbow. It's very impressive. Um, so he said that he had to grind down just a little bit of his bone, but then was able to rebuild it. And here's the amazing thing. So obviously Andrew's nail is not connected anymore. And so how how crazy is this? My first thought when I see it, besides the fact that it just ground me, um, was, oh, I hope you don't lose your nail. <laughs> and I'm going, it probably damaged the matrix. <laughs> anyway, this hand surgeon was fantastic. And he goes, I want to try and preserve the nail and, and the matrix. And um, and so he talked to me and he said hypponychium and um, he actually had a name for the nail bed that was different than what, I don't remember what it was, but like a, he called it a certain type of matrix and I, I've, Doug has never said that. So I thought that was interesting. It was so funny because I was sitting there going, can I take you to lunch and can we talk about fingernails? Because you're saying a couple words that I don't know yet. <laughs> so I don't think I get to take him out to lunch. But um, anyway, so yeah, I think he's going to do great. Uh, I think he's, he said, the, the doc said that, and this is interesting, that the only thing was that because of shortening his nail bed and his fingertip a little bit, that depending on how it oh so he's going to put a spacer underneath so that the nail that is still is there couldn't like curve in and and cut into his skin and then just totally destroy his matrix and stuff so um anyway so he said he was concerned that at the hypponychium point that if it doesn't behave right it could pull his nail down some so that it sort of goes around the fingertip a little bit. And it's like, well, this is going to be interesting. And the funny thing is, it was weird. He goes, so Andrew, would you like a silver or a beige spacer? So I guess what's going to happen is that they probably removed the nail. And so then this is covering it, the nail bed, because it's sensitive, very, very sensitive. So he had a choice of silver or beige. Of course, he chose beige, but interesting fascinating stuff I do not like seeing blood and muscle and bone and all that stuff but it's still very very interesting okay 
So I see that I've got a bunch of you. Hi to, hello sis, Diana Masterson joined. I haven't, I was so happy to see you at Christmas time. Uh, was it Christmas? Thanksgiving, it was Thanksgiving. Oh, that was a fun, that was a fun day. Thanksgiving, um, and Diana came over and she had gel that, that she needed to remove it. And um, so she's sitting there soaking in our, with our manicure clips. So she's got all of her fingers and she's drinking champagne. It was very fun. <laughs> all right. So let me, you know what, I'm going to start talking to you guys and then forget that I'm supposed to answer questions from yesterday. Um, okay. So Deborah Hallett asked me, do you recommend gel or shellac? Very good question because it's a very um, misunderstood thing is because Shellac is the brand name, so it's the brand name of the product by OPI, I think. I think. Don't shoot me if I'm wrong. Um, but it is a type of gel. Now, each company can have different consistencies. Their formula is different. So uh, I've heard from nail techs that Shellac is a very different type of formula. It behaves differently, but it is a gel. And the biggest thing with gels, no matter which one, which soak off gel you get, you want it to uh, be removed properly, which is, and I have been told that I don't sit up well enough. I keep slouching. <laughs> anyway, um, so the big thing is that it's, you've got to make sure that you are soaking it off um, because I think I was showing this yesterday too. You know what? All of these are running together because I'm doing them every day because of our sale and I know a lot of people have questions about the nail care they have questions about our products all of that and I wanted to make sure that I was accessible to you guys um, so poly gel I'm gonna have to look up poly gel wait no you was it, were you is it Marilyn um yeah somebody just sent me to go looking about poly gel Poly gel is is that the one by Jellish? I think it is. That's a fascinating new product. It is a combination, an interesting blend. It's magical, um, but it comes in a tube, and it is. They say it's the happy medium between acrylic and hard gel. Now, the difference between hard gel and soak off gel is that soak off gel is still, once you remove that glossy shine, um, acetone, it can dissolve in acetone. Um, but hard gel and acrylic are very acetone resistant. They don't like it. Um, so um, it's really interesting because you, you use uh, like a little knife to Google it. Google it and end up on their website. Um, I definitely feel like it's a product that for nail professionals. Um, but you know, there's a lot of DIY people who do their own acrylics and do their own gel. And I've done my own gel too. Um, I did it for 20 years, actually hard gel. Um, so this poly gel is kind of this blend and so you, you take a little piece out of the tube with a with your with a knife or a something and then you place so basically it's almost like it's created that little ball that nail professionals create with the monomer the liquid and the powder um, and they make that perfect little ball that's on the on the brush and so uh, it it mimics that and then there is a liquid that you dip your brush into and you can pat at it to um, build to to shape it the way you want on the nail it's very very interesting um, I think it cures yeah I think it cures under a lamp um, but it is going to be one of those things that um, must be filed down to very very thin and then you can use acetone to get rid of the last little bit um, so 
Yeah, it's going to be, a, it's, it'll be interesting to see how, whether it's embraced by the professional industry or slip. Ha ha, cutie Maya, thank you. It's called slip. Um, of whether that's going to be embraced or, or what. I mean, it, who knows? It could be completely revolutionary and make it so that acrylic is no longer desired the way it is. So who knows? That's what's fun about the technology of the new products. It's just amazing. All right, so the big thing when I go back to it is, if you can see, so go back to this one that looks like, like it's got craters on it. That is residual gel that did not soak off. So it's very, very important that if you remove your gel, you soak for 15, 20 minutes, whatever, and um, you still feel those little bumps, wrap yourself up with with acetone and a pad and foil or our soak and swipe clips and sit there for another 10 minutes because you want to be able to just wipe that off so okay um izzy nails it says can i use lotion with water that has it's the first water as the first ingredient sure you can um basically there's all kinds of ingredients and different things that lotions do. Um, and when the first ingredient is water, uh, basically what they're doing is, and it's got like humectants and different emollients and things, um, it creates this moisture type of barrier that works great until you wash it off because it's water. And when I had my mother, Mrs. Chemist, to develop our lotion stick, I wanted something that didn't wash off for a few hand washings. So that is how we came up with the lotion stick. And it took her a while to get it right. So all I do, as many of you have seen, I just do one hand. That's it. Rub the back of my hands. Oh, that's autumn. It smells so yummy. It smells like apple pie a la mode with some melted vanilla ice cream all over apple pie. Mm. Um, but so, uh, my suggestion is of course, uh, our lotion stick or anything that is a balm type of lotion. Um, you know, we aren't the only one who have it. Uh, there's, you know, everybody's got different formulas. Um, so yes, you can still use the lotions that you like. They're just going to wash off and then you have to reapply them. Uh, so there's... There's nothing wrong with that. Um, okay. Oh, I forgot her name. L-M-S-K-O-K. -K. Ah, forget it. She told me yesterday. She, I just wanted to say this. She said she ordered the Ultimate Bliss Box, which is a sampling of everything. And because of our sale right now, you're getting a pretty good discount. So on, so one, the Ultimate Bliss Box, if you were to get all of those things, um, you're saving, I think, $20. Don't hold me to it. But, and then, Corey will probably chime in here, say, um, but then you've got a discount, the added discount of the sale, I think it's 15%, and then you've got another 10% off uh, your entire order if you get our coupon code, and you go to myblisskiss.com forward slash newsletter to get that coupon code um, so she was saying that the ultimate bliss box is totally totally all caps awesome and she's like I'm not even lying I'm totally addicted to bliss kiss so that's so cool thank you um, okay Norma six Norma m60 uh, I've told a lot of women where I get my hair cut about your products they saw me using my oil pen and wanted to know where I get it. So I spread the word. We are so grateful for all of our loyal bliss sets who just share the love everywhere, share the bliss. Um, we really, really appreciate it. And I'm the same way. I just talk about it everywhere. And, any, and it's, it's just great. It's a great conversation starter because people are like, what is that? What are you doing? It's nice. Okay. Um, Okay, 1964 Draven has 
what can I do about my nail if it's left from, it says my nail left from my nail bed. So I'm going to assume that that means if your nail plate has separated from the nail bed. Thanks for all the little hearts, guys. Um, so if your nail, so let's say that, let's, let me find an example that I can just point at. Okay. So if your nail has sort of separated from the nail bed somewhere up here, don't worry too much about it. It's gonna, as the nail grows out, it's gonna just, the, this part will stay connected. It will basically kind of like, as that grows out, sort of, it looks like it reconnects, but basically you're filing off that part. Um, if the entire nail plate has left, has lifted, one, you kind of need to know why. Um, did you smash it and and damage it really badly and that's caused it to separate? That's usually what happens. Um, if, if you don't know, um, it could be worth a shot to uh, take a visit to your dermatologist probably um, and see what they say. The, you know, the problem is once it's separated, it's done. Um, and so then really all you can do, and because, remember I talk about um, the, the pink nail bed nourishing the nail plate, and that's what keeps it connected. It's what keeps it transparent. It keeps it technically soft, plus um, um, soft and flexible. And then our tips dry out because they're no longer being nourished by that. So this is the same thing that happens if your nail plate lifts from the nail bed, it's not being nourished and it starts to dry out and curl like a leaf, like an autumn leaf that's dying. Um, so it's going to be very, very important that you try and use as much oil as possible, especially, oh, I think it was the MMA acrylic, you're in there, it's Marilyn, right? Um, I think you sent me pictures, didn't you? So yeah, if it's just partially, it'll grow back. It'll 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 reconnect as it's growing. Does that make sense? Um, and you'll be fine. Um, so I think I think you're gonna be okay. Just make sure that you've got lots of oil, especially if you sort of feel it curling and getting tight. That means it's drying out, and you'll want to really make sure that you get lots of oil on it and. Um, and do some overnight oil treatments. You could even actually go get, um, if it's like really a problem and really curling, you could go get these little, I think they're called cotlets, I think. But basically they're like the just the finger part of a nitrile glove. Um, and it comes in, um, and it just rolls onto your finger and it kind of stays here snug. You could actually put a whole bunch of oil and then do that. Just use that little um, finger covering thingy. Uh, <laughs> um, so that is all the questions from yesterday. Yay, I did that. Okay, let's see. Okay, now I know you guys have been asking questions, so let me see if I can go find them. In the middle of all the, hello, all the joins. Thanks for all the nice thoughts about Andrew. Thank you guys. Um, the gloves to clean. It's great, I love, I love it, and I've never liked gloves, now I do. No, oh, oh, are you talking about our dish cleaning gloves? Magical, aren't they? They are awesome. So we have, uh, and we only have one size, it's medium, um, because we just started with a small amount and we weren't sure if there was gonna be enough demand. But what she's talking about is our kitchen gloves that I use, and they have a flocking inside of them like nothing I've felt before. Um, it doesn't get all crumbly when you start to sweat like the other ones do, the cheaper ones. So um, yeah. They are pretty awesome. I don't know what they did to make them so different, but they they make cleaning with gloves on very, very nice. Um, McCurry, hi. 
Oh, so hi to all of you guys, Steffi's Nailsies. Um, hi again, I love your videos. Thank you. Oh, you guys are so nice. Okay, it's poly gel. Do you like acrylic or gel? Cutie Maya. Um, I actually, if I had to pick a choice between the two, I personally would choose gel. Um, because knowing what I know about nails, I want them to be flexible. And gel is a more flexible product. Um, you know, hard gel is going to be harder. Uh, soak off gels are, are obviously much more flexible. Um, and so that is good because basically what they're doing is adding a temporary strength. So I talk about with nail polish of using five layers of nail polish to create temporary strength. And that's really what gel is doing. It's adding temporary strength that lasts for like three weeks. Um, but then, and a lot of people, they say, well, acrylic and gel, it destroyed my nails, they're so thin. No, <laughs> well, yes, acrylic, people who apply acrylic wrong is and grind down half of your nail plate, yes, that is true. But if gel is being applied properly and they are just barely removing that surface shine um, and then applying it, they are really not thinning your nail plate that much. And so when you have that product removed, you've gotten used to the strength of that added layer of gel. And, um, and so then you look at your nails and you're like, oh my God, they're so thin. No, this is what they were to start with. <laughs> so... It, it takes a while to get used to them if used to the way your nails are again if you've been wearing gel for a long time um, acrylic I just the big thing I've had acrylic before um, my big thing about acrylic is and part of it's because of the way my nails are shaped is I really like this um, the shape of my nails and so in order to have acrylic done that's the shape of my nails the way I like it, um, the sides end up being very thin and I don't like it. So that's why I've had acrylic done twice. Actually, I, I learned how to do it on my own. Um, and I was such a perfectionist and I didn't know what I was doing really well enough. So I didn't do a nice, beautiful, smooth finish that needs hardly any filing. So I ended up doing a lot of filing for several hours to get it perfect. And I'm sure I overfiled and didn't, I wanted it just the way my nails were. And I'm sure that was completely incorrect because I do know that there, there's like certain zones of your nail and that there has to be certain thicknesses and certain zones and stuff. And I have never gone to nail school. So that's about all I know. Um, so there we go. Um, my lashes are amazing. <laughs> Thanks off topic. Yes, I, um, I do not. I have very blonde lashes. So, <laughs> so yes, I enjoy artificial lashes. I'm getting very good at putting them on. Oh, and you know what, you guys, you know, those silicone brushes off topic here, the, the silicone brushes that are all being used in, I have one buried. But anyway, I, one of the silicone brushes that has the really pointy tip, I actually use that to help me get this inside corner to set. <laughs> so, you know, our tools are multi-purpose. We can use them around the house for other things. Um, Steffi's Nailsies. I haven't read this yet. I had an unfortunate accident when I went to get a pedicure a few years back. I was embarrassed to say that I attracted something on my left toenail. Does Bliss Kiss Oil get rid of it? I'm guessing you're talking about a toenail fungus. Um, uh, some people find that our oil does, definitely. If you're, I think if you're, it, everybody is different. Um, I found, so I've heard several people say that our oil got rid of the toenail fungus. Some people have to use straight melaleuca oil, tea tree oil. Um, I was not finding it su successful and I have been fighting it for years on one of my big, tone, big toenails. And so I am actually experimenting with, um, right now, uh, Listerine 
I know it sounds, but when I started looking online, there was many kind of home remedy kind of things. And they said Listerine or uh, li mix Listerine and vinegar. Well, I like to decrease the variables when I try something. So I'm like, okay, I'll just start with the Listerine because I felt like that was more, more antiseptic. I'm probably wrong, but um, so the, and the reason that I am feeling really confident about it is because um, they're water, they're water based. So um, when, remember I talk about uh, your nails soak up one third their weight in water, okay? And we know that, we get out of the shower with, if we've had naked nails and taken a nice long 15, 45 minute shower. I only do that once every couple weeks. Um, if our nails have been soaking, they soak up all of this water, and so all of the cells are sort of pushed apart. Well, that makes it so that some other ingredients can go in there. And so I've kind of figured, well, with these antibacterial type of ingredients, the water is gonna help suck it in. Um, and so I've been, here's a funny story. So I was like, great, okay. I'll just soak my, the, just the ball of my foot in the Listerine. <laughs> my foot burned. You know, like when you use Listerine in your mouth and it burns, my foot burned all night. I don't recommend doing that. So actually, um, I <laughs> have been, I've been using one of our clips. Um, and, and so I take a little cotton ball, saturate that. And it's really, really helping so far, but I'm not going to do an article about it until I can like show pictures and I need to get to the point where it's completely done and that's another six months. I know it takes my big toe an entire year to replace itself. Talk about a long R&D project. Um, so try it, try our oil, try, try things. Um, I did try there was a couple things that like balm type of things you know you rub that on but they had beeswax and so I'm like after I've learned all this stuff I'm going beeswax isn't going to help that those ingredients penetrate and kill the nail fungus so I got rid of those um okay cutie Maya are you asking if I tried poly gel uh I have not if that's the one um, let's see. My son gave it to me for my birthday for the 24th of this month. It's so hard, you guys, when conversations happen like this with a whole bunch of stuff in, in the middle. So, happy early birthday. <laughs> okay. Um, Simba is my pet, says I love Bliss Kiss, all caps, thank you. Um, let's see. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Lots of hello, you joined. Okay. Uh, do you recommend oil pens or the oil you get in like a nail polish bottle? Um, cutie. Uh, I want to say, are you asking me if I'm recommending our pens or because we don't have oil in a polish bottle. We used to, but people, we had too many customers who had children spilling it um, and basically our replacement numbers told us to, plus I knew that people were using way too much. So <laughs> I was like, this is not a good idea. Um, so that's why we switched to this. Just realized though that because this isn't going to tip over and dump out like a polish bottle would, but dogs like to eat it. So um, do I recommend oil pens? So I personally don't, I actually don't even like using the dropper bottle on my nails because one drop is enough for all, for me, all 10 fingernails. So it's a lot harder to apply that one drop and get it everywhere. So I prefer the pen because I can either sit there and just paint it on, or if I need to be really fast, I just run it like that and run it underneath 
and then I'm sitting at a red signal and I just sit there and rub. So um, I prefer the pen. That's why I have it. And that's why we sell our starter kit as a four pack because our brain is a weird, weird thing. It does not remind us to do things at the appropriate time. So you need to have a pen everywhere that would be where you are. So in your desk drawer, in your purse or your backpack, um, by your nightstand, and also by where you sit and watch television. And that way, when you look at your hands, you're like, oh, maybe I should oil them. Oh, look, look, that's right there. So, um, Laura, oh my gosh, the finger cutlets would be great for your toes. Yes, they would, honey. Yeah, look at that, smart idea. So if you wanna do like hydration, uh, intensive hydration treatments on your toenails, you could do that too. Uh, Cause people had said, wouldn't it be great if there were like nitrile gloves for feet? So you could do that with your feet. And um, boy, that would make your heels really nice, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, peg and nails, why do nails dry and flake? Great question couple things. So when you talk about flaking, what you're actually talking about is called delamination, also peeling. So this is a pretty strong case of what you're talking about, and that is due to water absorption. Um, so what happens is, sorry for all of you who have been here before and are listening and hearing me say the same thing over and over, but you know what it's important stuff and I don't mind saying it over and over so when your nails are your normal nails they have about 50 layers of keratin so they're a lot like a book okay you've got all these nice layers sitting together and the perfect blend of moisture and body oil is pumped through the nail bed into the nail plate and keeps it um, keeps it moisturized basically and, um, and that's what keeps it from curling up and, and getting dry. Well, when your nail tips go past, when your nail go pa goes past your fingertips, it becomes your free edge, and now it's no longer being nourished by the nail bed. So it dries out. And then, to make things worse, so if our nails are like this, nice layers, when we take water and they, our nails absorb a third a third of their weight in water so they the the water pushes all the layers apart so you end up with layers that look like this and water gets in there and then you get enough water and they these I've never done this but they start to lift and peel away so uh, you know I tried to I got this book wet as the example and I tried to squish it I actually was squishing it while I was letting it dry and there was just no hope. So our nails are a little bit more forgiving than paper, but they, um, at some point, they're just like, yep, we're done. And then they start to delaminate. So they start to peel. And, oh, this is a good thing. If your nails start to do this and you get some really big peels like this, go ahead and just very, very carefully file down that edge and then what I do is, if I get one like this, is I take nail glue and I fill that in and then reapply your base coat, your top coat, your base coat, your two, two layers, let me try again. Two layers of base coat, ridge filling base coat, two layers of polished color, and then a layer of top coat. And you want to wrap your base coat and your top coat all the way around to the underside. That's why it's that's why I call it the Fab Five wrap because you're using polish to protect the entire surface, both sides of your nail plate, so that it doesn't get doesn't absorb water. Okay, um, so for sure, keep your hands out of water and oil them. Oil is kind of the glue that helps glue those layers back together. Um, Catherine says, I'm glad I caught you. Kudos to you, Kirsten, for your fabulousness on the bite picking group and Corey for the how-to videos. Oh, that's so nice. And Catherine, thank you for bringing that up. Okay, so 
I truly believe that probably 90% of the population on this planet either bites their nails, picks at their skin, or does some variation of both. Um, and so we have created, Kirsten and I um, have created a support group over on Facebook for anybody who bites their nails, picks at their skin. There's actually, Kirsten and I created a spectrum. There's six different, um, kind of like on the autism spectrum, you know, there's different degrees of, of autism. There's different degrees of biters and pickers and the blend of them also. So we've given those names so that, and, and what are the tools that if you are a particular um, persona to, to say you know, that that person, it's kind of like, it's okay, I am, and what am I? Because I am a skin picker. I am what's called a perfectionist, perfectionist picker. You would never ever know that I have any issue because of my nails looking nice. But where's that picture? As many of you guys know. This is the bane of my existence. So these little guys is what gets me. And I will grab that, I <laughs> will pick at it, and I will rip it. And the problem is, this is all dead, but this tiny little bit down in here in the sidewall, that's still attached and it's still alive. And you grab that and you rip it, and you're gonna rip a whole bunch of live skin with it, and then it gets infected, and then it gets full of pus, and then it burns like for a week till it heals. Um, so that I have to rely on our infant nail clippers. And do I have them here or did they migrate again? All my stuff moves because I move it. It didn't come back. Nope, there it is. Um, hiding behind tripods. Okay, so I rely on these infant nail clippers, and you have to have them, especially if you pick at skin. These really are not for cutting grown-up nails. They're for cutting paper-thin infant nails. But what I like about them is that they have this, that the head of it, the cutting part, is smaller, and so it's easier to get in here and cut that skin, cut that dead piece, before I go ahead and start ripping at it. Um, and so that's really important. And if you get some of these, oh, this is also there. You can, can kind of see it. There it is. Those shreddy hangnails. Oh, those two. Those are what these are for. Um, and so if you try and cut your nails, people have been breaking them because they're not made for grown up fingernails. And so you end up pushing too hard trying to make it through that um, but I have to have these with me everywhere or I will destroy myself as a perfectionist picker <laughs> so if you are interested in getting to that group um, go to myblisskiss.com forward forward slash healthy nails and you will um, be emailed all of the literature that Kirsten and I have put together and links to the videos and the um, and then the link to the group. And just so you know, it's a closed group because we want to keep out the creepy people and the trolls and stuff. Um, and we work really hard to get that, get you approved within 24 hours. So, um, and I know Kirsten's been on top of that a whole lot. So I know she's getting in there and, and getting you guys um, approved a lot faster. Um, so, an amazing, amazing, amazing group of people who are so so supportive and that's why I'm really proud of the group that it's becoming because it doesn't there is absolutely no shame um, even when we have had so they're the worst kind of nail biter we call the meat grinders because they will bite all the way down and keep going um, and so there are people who have posted those pictures and they are painful to look at because you feel their pain when you see the picture, at least I do. Um, and so we just cheer everybody on. It's a, it's a constant, constant battle, I guess, is because we're, we've got this negative habit that is usually goes along with anxiety, depression, whatever. Um, uh, sometimes it's boredom, but anxiety is a big one. And, um, 
So very, very supportive group. Um, in fact, I see that Cheryl has joined and um, she is phenomenal. Um, so when you join, say hello to Cheryl and pro she'll probably beat you to it. <laughs> so she's so awesome. Um, so again, to get to that group is um, go to myblisskiss.com forward slash bliss, no, sorry, forward slash healthy nails. And then we also have one for people dealing with skin issues like eczema and psoriasis. And that one is myblisskiss.com forward slash healthy skin. So both, both amazing groups. Hello, Norma. Um, I love that. It's, it's a my Elizabeth beauty. Hi. Uh, Natalie Rose, do you have any tips on how to not get polish on your proximal fold? I can't just doing base and top coat with no color because I always get out of the lines. Yes, I have tips. One, like all things, practice, 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 practice. But there are definitely some tips. So let me get my trusty polish bottle. Okay, I hope you guys can see this. Um, and for those of you on Instagram, if you want the white letter, white words to go away, I think you swipe down and they will go away um, so that you can actually see this. So what you're going to do is, first of all, is you've got to practice, depending on the size, the, the length of your nails, you get the feeling of how much polish needs to be on this brush because beginners start and they just take all this polish and then try and put it on and it spooges everywhere. So it's very important that you learn how to, how much to wipe off. So I was talking about this before and actually, so I wipe the, I wipe towards me. I wipe the inside of, against the inside of the neck. Don't do across the top because then that gets polished on this and then when you close it up, then what happens? It glues itself together, which is kind of why um, some of you, uh, oh, it's the, the, what we call the nail porn videos where there it's like slow motion and you see all of the, the polish and they, they sit there and they wiggle it like this. And I'm like, every time I, I see one of those, I'm like, if you guys aren't cleaning the neck of your bottle, you're, you're just gluing it together. But anyway, so I wipe on the inside of the neck towards me, and then that leaves a ball of polish on the, on the outside, and then I turn that over. Okay, so here's the way you do it. You have got working time. That's the first thing is that unless you're using a quick dry polish, you have working time. You do not have to polish your nails this fast, okay? So you literally, okay, there's a couple of other things. You're going to, can I see this? You're gonna to go to about three, mil, three milliliter, millimeters before your proximal fold, and you're going to push back towards it, and then you're gonna pull this way. So you're, let me try and do this better. Um, so you're gonna take that brush and you're going to place it here, then you're going to push it this way, and then pull it back this way. So, and if you watch some of the really good bloggers, go look at Sveta Sanders. Um, who else is really, really good? Um, oh, just go through my account, because I share the really, really good ones, um, who have really great photography, and watch them and watch how they do it because they they don't start here at the proximal fold they start here and they push back pull out and then you do the same on the side and the side and then one clean swipe through the middle again to sort of level it all out and so just practice to be able to do four strokes okay and the other one thing is here lots of tips is a lot of people i see they just use the brush Kind of like this and no you want to let me see if I can do it this way you want to flare that brush out as wide as you can get see how wide you can get that brush 
okay? So really, really push down and flare that brush out as much as you possibly can. That helps a lot too. That's huge, 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 huge. Um, what else was the other thing? Working time, this. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't know what it is. One of you will let me know. <laughs> I tell Corey this all the time. I hate it when it's just like gone. Um, I hope I answered all of that. I feel like there was one thing I'm missing though, but okay, Roaring Tiger. Sorry I keep asking this, but I'm really curious if I can switch the lotion and oil scent to another one when ordering the Mega Hydration Kit. I would like the winter, but it's not an option. It's not a normal thing we do, because we're trying, because the team, what they do, so when, when we put together these kits, is, so when you order it, like if you order the travel kit, it's already been put together like this. It's all packed up in a box, which is why we only, with the travel kit, we only offer the fragrance-free pen. And you've got a no fragrance lip balm, no flavor, and a fragrance free lotion stick mini, and then of course our nail file. Um, <clears throat> it's all prepackaged. So, like, uh, <clears throat> if you're wanting to order a lot of these kits, it's not put to. It's already been put together. Um, but email us. Roaring Tiger, and, and let's see what we can do. My team's pretty awesome. So um, we just, we it's an inventory thing of making sure that the inventory is handled properly um, because our software, as you place orders, it pulls these things out of, <clears throat> out of our inventory. It's, so it's very complicated. Um, uh, so yeah, just email us. We'll see what we can do. Um, Okay. Mio, hi Anna, first time joining your, joining your live. Hi Mio, glad you're here. I'm so glad all of you guys who come. And um, Cheryl says that she's, Cheryl, so I was talking about Cheryl and she's like sort of our, our loving queen bee over there in the uh, nail biters and skin picker group. So she's saying, we will welcome you loving, lovingly and with no judgment. And she means that. And, um, and Kirsten's in there a lot too. <clears throat> I know for me, I'm really busy doing Instagram, so I try and pop in as much as possible. But um, yeah, we've got a lot of great people to help with that. And again, if you're interested, if you're dealing with any type of nail biting or skin picking or comb combination, go to myblisskiss.com forward slash healthy nails and you'll get all the information emailed to you okay let's see so great to see all of you new people <laughs> why, why does it say from Corey Seidel hi mom it's me Bradley that's my youngest one that's weird um oh and unless Bradley just wanted to say hi mom <laughs> Hi, Bradley. <laughs> um, Shango says, dogs and babies, so much trouble for everyone. Oh, you're so funny. Hard work, that's what it is. But yes, dogs and babies, toddlers, they love to just, they, they get a hold of this oil and they just think it's great fun to play with. So here's a better thing. Let them get a hold of a pen because it's so cute. They watch you do it and then they will do it just like you. Oh, that was the other thing. I knew it. Use your pen to practice applying polish. So when you're doing this, put that brush down, flare it out, push it back towards your, your proximal fold and then pull it out. It's good for your polish because you're you're in, the oil does penetrate into the top surface of your polish and it really helps you. So, two great things. So yeah, uh, definitely. And then the other thing is, if put our oil on toddlers and, and go, okay, 
Now smell it. And they go like this, and they literally will walk around for a whole, I, for how long? And they'll just walk around like this. It's so cute. Um, 1964 says, I love the pen and I'm putting the oil on right now. It's, I know, so yeah, I'm kind of this constant reminder. Hello, it's time to oil. <laughs> Lotion stick. So Nan Nan Sue M83 says lotion stick and aloe socks overnight. Yes. Um, Norma says this is why I'm going through the nail oil like crazy. I'm putting oil on my toenails now, and I love it on my face too. I know I've been putting it uh, lately a lot more with every year. <laughs> I've been putting it more under my eyes, and it's really helping. Um, Norma, I fully support you going through the oil like crazy. Um, 1964. Is it Marilyn? I can't remember. Um, would the lotion stick be good for diaper rash since it's really good for my son's psoriasis and my eczema? See, look at that. It's great for her psoriasis and her eczema. And yeah, I wish I had had, I wouldn't use a fragranced one though. I would use the fragrance free. And since it's gonna be on a baby's bum, I would dedicate this one to the baby's bum. Uh, <laughs> but I think it would. Um, you know, it's certainly worth a shot and I think the oil would be good too. Um, so yeah, I wish I had had our products when my kids were in diapers. Um, but I wouldn't have wanted the the job. I wouldn't have wanted to be a business owner when my kids were in diapers. So I was glad to have that opportunity to stay home. Thanks, Corey. Um, let's see. Nan says, I don't use colored polish. How can I get the polish to dry quicker? I do good to get two coats of clear. Oh, are you saying, Nan, that you don't use color polish because it takes too long to dry? Um, yeah, I, I get that. Um, and I am, so one of the, the big things is make sure that you're doing really thin coats. Um, it's, if you do, if you, like a lot of people want to, they're like, I don't want to do two coats. I want it to be done in one. And so then they apply a thicker layer. Well, that takes a whole lot longer to dry. Um, so if you can do thin coats, that helps a lot. Excuse me. I usually wait, um, like 10 minutes in between five, 10 minutes in between each, each one. Um, but that's because a lot of times I'll just sit here, I'll get on my phone and I'll do Instagram a little bit. And, um, so it's okay for me that it takes a half an hour to polish my nails. I'm okay with that. Um, and then... I am going to be trying uh, polish drying drops and sprays and stuff. I would really like to do that and sort of do experiments of how long does it take to dry without those. And um, I did see something that Doug, Doug Shun says they do help. So um, I have to go find that information again because it's not in his book. It's in his subscription. Um, he has a video subscription. So... Um, oh, this is another tip. Do not do this to dry your nail polish because what are you doing? You are increasing the airflow across the top surface of your nail, of the polish, and so then the outside is drying faster, and then you're trapping in the solvents, and then that can lead to bubbles. So, sorry, don't do this. Um... McCry says, I never thought to use nail glue for bad delamination, for peeling delamination. I usually just file, file it away and grab the nail polish. And you can for really small ones, but sometimes, you know, you get a, a really big peel and it's just like, it makes more sense to fill that in, seal it, stops the water from getting in there too. Um, so, Kate, if you scrape the dirt out from under your nails, will it damage the underside of your nails? Also, if you put nail polish thinner in a top coat, will it mess up the quick dry aspect of the top coat? Those are great questions. So, <clears throat> if you scrape the dirt out from underneath your nails, 
Will you damage the underside? You will not damage the underside of your nails, but what you will be doing is, let me use this cuticle tool to show you. Um, I don't have anything. This part underneath here, right where the, the nail plate leaves is called the hyponychium. Um, and I've heard some people call it hyponychium. I'm gonna have to go back and double check on the pronunciation of it. But anyway, when you're digging under there with a tool, you can't help but be pushing on that. Um, and so, and especially if you're digging into the corners, you're kind of releasing, not kind of, yar, um, you're releasing that little part of the nail from the nail bed. Um, and so it's more, especially if you're trying to dig out of the corners here, there, then it's gonna, you're gonna have more separation and your nails are gonna be more likely to tear along this way. So as much as you can, don't dig it out. What I do is I use rubbing alcohol and like a makeup brush, a little stiff little makeup brush, and I'll use that to sort of get in there with the little bristles and pull out the dust and the dirt. Um, and then if I'm just cleaning underneath, getting ready for a manicure to start, then I use rubbing alcohol and a cotton swab. Cotton, I like Q-tip. Q-tip works better. Um, and I think it's because they're, they wrap, they wrap the cotton around the stick a little tighter than less expensive brands. Um, so I really do like the Q-tip ones. There is a difference. Um, okay. And then also if you put polish thinner in a top coat, will it mess up with the quick dry aspect of the top coat? Um, I would say try it uh, and see what you think. Um, it depends on what the solvents are. You uh, like Sashvit, um, and that is how you pronounce it. Uh, it is. It looks like sachet vite, um, and I've heard it said that way, but that's not it. Sashvit means quick dry in French, um, and they have different solvents that actually. This is why it's an awesome, awesome top coat. It actually helps pull the solvents out of your polish too. I don't know how. Um, and so it will actually help dry the polish underneath, which is, it seems like hoodoo voodoo to me. Um, but as a result, it, and since it is a quick dry polish, those solvents are going out the bottle just as fast as when you're, when you've got it open. And so Sash V gets thick very quickly. And so they have a product called Sash Restore and it is those solvents that are evaporating that then you put back in it. Um, it's really pricey. Both of them are really pricey for me, and I have been really happy with this one. So Sally Hansen, uh, Insta-Dry. Um, I've used it for years. Uh, as many of you know, we used to have our own top coat and base coat, but the company, um, that carried it just decided to close. And I have a minute and 50 seconds. How does that happen? Anyway, so this is my favorite. Um, and what I would say is try it. It probably, the solvents will be fine. Um, I don't know if it, those will affect the gloss of the top coat though. I can't, I can't say that. So if you notice that it's, it's not shiny like you want, then those solvents did affect it. Um, okay, so I gotta go, and if I see a whole bunch of questions, here we go again, I will screenshot those, I'll write them down. Um, uh, you can find my articles over at nailcarehq.com. You can find uh, Lisa. It is Sally Hansen. It's not red, comes in a red bottle. You can find it at any um, drugstore. Um, Target might have it too. Um, where, what else? You can find our products are still on sale till tomorrow at midnight. Um, so go to myblisskiss.com if you're interested in picking stuff up. We won't have another sale till July. Um, and then also you can find over a hundred videos at YouTube and all of these lives are there and um, I've dictated a whole bunch of 
my articles so that you can listen to those while you're doing your nails and um, and there's a bunch of product demonstrations also so I will see you guys tomorrow I'm not sure when but just keep your eyes open for Instagram and I'll talk to you guys later bye hey it's Anna I've written over 70 nail care articles that you can find at nailcarehq.com. And if you're looking for products that will help you have longer, stronger nails, visit myblisskiss.com. Be sure to push the subscribe button and turn on notifications to get alerted when I publish more videos. This is Anna, signing off and sending you bliss.